In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a drawing from Adobe Fresco and vectorize it in Illustrator on the iPad. So to begin with, I've got a bunch of drawings, but I've really pared this down. So I'm just turning off all the layers that I don't want to send over. And I just have these three flowers here. And by the way, I drew these using the newsprint inker brush and it's got a lot of grit to it, but you can see right now I'm at 278%. And the more I zoom in, the more you can see the pixels there, which really doesn't matter if we're going to ultimately vectorize this. So I've drawn on kind of a small artboard and I'm using a lot of texture and I'm zooming in here, uh, but ultimately this is going to be vectorized. And what I'm looking for is enough texture in this line work that it will translate once it's vectorized. All right. So I'm going to use the button at the top, right to send this over to illustrator on the iPad, opening a copy on illustrator on the iPad. I'm going to convert the layers to objects. You can also flatten. Um, when you do this, when you convert layers to objects, and you're dealing with pixel based layers, like in Fresco, you will have a separate image for every layer that you sent over from Fresco. So there's my pixel layer image. And then the background image, which comes over from Fresco is locked. I'm going to unlock it. I just want to get rid of that whole thing. It's just white pixels in the background. And all I need is this image right here. One thing that I'd like to do um, before I do anything, is make a copy so I have that original image to work with in case I need to go back and change the settings. So I'm going to tap and drag on the plus sign to just put a copy of the image off to the side. Then I'm going to zoom in to the one here on my artboard. And then in the common actions bar, I'll just tap on the vectorize icon. And this opens the properties panel. Here is the vectorize area. And I can use this eye to see the original versus the current tracing settings. Now here, what we have are a bunch of presets and they are sketch, line art, logo, painting, and photograph. And each one of these just gives you a different collection of settings. And I have a slide here that shows you kind of what I discovered as I was clicking around. And if this looks like a lot, um, maybe it'll make a little bit more sense in a minute, but let me try to explain this. So I'm calling this black and white vectorized presets specifically because I'm using black and white instead of color or grayscale. The reason is because I just want that one color line art that I can change to any color I want to later. Then down here on the left side, we have sketch line art, logo, painting, and photo. Those are the settings that we just looked at on the iPad. And there are four settings, four sliders on the iPad. And I want to explain these. Threshold, the first setting is something that you only see when you're doing a black and white vectorization. So higher numbers, if you add to this number, you get more black. And this makes sense here for a sketch. It's high. It's set to 225. 128 on the other hand is right in the middle of the slider. So let's go back to the iPad and just look at that. So if I start out with a sketch preset here and it's already set to black and white color mode and fills. Those are already chosen for me. And here we can see that threshold slider. It's set to 225. If I turn it down to the middle range, we see less black in the results. So I can understand how for a sketch, this makes sense because usually it's done in pencil and you want to push this slider up more. Then next we have paths. So what that means is, you know, how accurate, how many paths is illustrator going to use to draw all the details in this. So higher numbers here make for more texture and more accuracy in the final tracing corners. It all depends on the art. Lower corner numbers generally can make your art look smoother and higher corner numbers may make it look a little less smooth but it's better for perhaps logos where you don't want it to look melted. You want it to have nice sharp corners. So maybe you would set that setting high there. And then noise is kind of the opposite of all of these higher numbers actually get you less detail and lower numbers get you more detail. Then finally at the bottom, we have the method, which is either going to be a budding or overlapping paths. And it all depends on the preset. Generally for line art, I want this to be a budding because I also want to use the ignore white setting. 
which means it won't trace the background, the white background of the paper or the background in fresco. And then what we get here is every one of these little petals here, for instance, are just holes in this flower, see-through. If I were to uncheck ignore white, each of these little petals would be a separate white shape. And in order to use the ignore white setting, you have to also be using the abutting path setting. All right, let's go back to the chart really quick. So now that we've talked about the threshold setting here on these different presets, here's the path. So all of the presets give you a path setting of 50%. And what I'm looking for generally, these are some of the settings down here below this purple line. I'm showing you the settings that I like to use for black and white line art. So these are my custom settings here. So 128, that's just kind of right in the middle of black and white. If it needs to be higher, I can set it higher. If it needs to be lower because of the particular artwork, I'll change that setting. Path, I like it to be high if I'm looking to get some texture out of my line art. And so here I have it set to 90, quite a bit higher than any of the presets. Uh, corners for something that's textural, I like more corners. So in some cases we have a corner setting of 75 for sketches, for line art. For logos, like I had said before, you want more corners in your logos so they don't look melted. But painting and photos, they lower the corner numbers for those presets. So I'm setting mine generally to 75, but it all depends on the art. And then here we have noise. So the presets here set the noise for sketching and line art and logo at 20, 25. Those are pretty high settings. They don't get you a lot of detail. However, I can understand how on a logo, you know, you don't want a ton of detail. You want fewer little bumps and things. We're not really looking for texture with a logo. We're usually probably looking for a, a smooth, more geometric tracing. If we look down at painting and photo, this makes sense. Photo is where you're kind of looking for the most detail. So the preset has that set at five pixels of noise. And then the painting preset has it at 10 pixels of noise. And for my art, I'm setting it at one. But of course, remember, I'm doing a black and white tracing and I'm also gonna ignore white, which removes a lot of anchor points. There's a lot of extra things that aren't gonna be traced here. So a lot of the time when you work with these settings, you're really trying to find a balance between getting the most texture or accuracy out of the final tracing while at the same time, not overloading the number of anchor points, especially if you're working in repeat patterns, because as I always say, you're just gonna be multiplying that complexity over and over again with every copy of the motif. So let's go back over to the iPad here. And what I'm gonna do is just set these settings to match the custom setting that I showed you that was below the purple line. So I've got my color mode set to black and white. I've got the output set to fills. Now I'm gonna move the threshold slider down to the middle, 125 or 128 is the officially in the middle. The path setting, I'm gonna change this to 90. So that's gonna give me more accuracy. The noise setting at the very bottom, one pixel, and we're gonna get more texture there. And then corners, I'm gonna set this to 75. So fairly high, but not ridiculously high and then ignore white is gonna ignore the background. So this is gonna be a tracing as I zoom in here where I'm gonna be able to get some nice texture out of this line work, but probably be somewhere in a happy middle in terms of not having too many anchor points and too much complexity. Because you can see, you know, it all depends on what size you're gonna use this. The further out you go, the smaller the motifs are, the less texture you're really gonna see. So it all depends on, you know, that final size. And I'll probably use them at something like this size right here. So once you adjust all of those sliders, here's another tip. I like to make a copy. So I'm just going to tap on this plus sign and drag to drag out a copy of that image tracing, which has all the settings in it in case I need to go back to them. Now I'm going back to the original. And at the very bottom of the properties panel, there's an expand vectorization button. It also works on the common actions bar if you just tap the same button that you tap to start the vectorization. And now we can see that object is expanded. If I look up in the upper right corner and 
switch to outline mode, we can see those paths. Now I'm jumping ahead and just adding color. So you can see I have a layer in the background here where I can draw some color in. So with that layer selected, I'll close the layers panel. Let me get another color here. And then uh, with my pencil tool, I'm just drawing some petal shapes here. And it's great doing this with the pencil tool because it's just going to be really, really simple and fast. Rather than filling these petal shapes, like you could do with live paint over on the desktop, which is a great feature. But the problem is that it's going to pick up every bit of that texture in the outline that it creates. Oh, looks like I, I jumped ahead with my color setting there. Here we go. Now this is interesting too, because we started out with a document that we sent, you know, we sent these images over to Illustrator on the iPad directly from Fresco. So we don't have any document swatches here because this wasn't even a default document. So what I'm gonna do here is just tap on that yellow and add it as a swatch, tap on that green, tap the plus sign to add it as a swatch. And that's the most accurate way that I can change these colors. It's more accurate than using the eyedropper tool here. And I also want to capture this red color, tapping the plus to add it as a swatch. And then I can color this as well. And then once you've made whatever changes you want to make, go ahead and tap on the file name and tap on save now. And that will just save any of the changes that you made. Because this is a cloud document, it's continuously saving. Also, if you exit here, it will save it as well. So let's go over to Illustrator on the desktop. Now, if I go to the home screen, I can see there's my file right there. And I'm just gonna tap on that to open it. And here's the artwork. If I look over in the swatches panel, I have the global swatches that I saved. The layers panel has the different layers that I had saved. And then one thing that's a little different over here, if you're going to change this black line art to a different color here on the desktop, it's gonna be fastest to do this by using a color swatch, like one of the ones that we saved. The reason is because that color is actually grayscale. And this is what happens when you do a black and white tracing it always gives you a grayscale black. So choosing a swatch will make it easy to just change that color really quickly. But if I were to use, for example, the color picker by double clicking on this fill swatch, I could choose another color. You can see it's almost about to change there, but when I tap okay, it goes back to grayscale. So if you ever encounter this with black and white image tracing, that's the explanation for it. Sometimes the shortest way to get around that is just use one of your saved swatches. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful. I love this workflow for making line art that has some textural character to it, but of course, keeping it all in the vector family. All right, so I'm Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator online, and I have a newsletter where I send out Illustrator tips and tricks a couple of times a month. To sign up, see the link in the description below the video. All right, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.